Uh, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our special edition in August, which is two characters a day with one continuing character. Um, so Sheng is this lucky character that I'm going to be uh, overexposing to you. Um, that it, the Sheng itself is defined by uh, having planned so both of them are showing you two versions of plant growing on top of soil. So this plant still rooted in soil means it's still alive, it's still growing. That's the definition of life. We use plant to apply to all kinds of life. Okay, so life now paired with chan in sheng chan. So usually we talk about a sheng huo, uh, which is uh, water flowing, right? And chan here uh, means reproduce. So Chinese definition of reproduce made of this top portion, which I'm showing you visually familiar object. That if you use Google Translate, a lot of times it's a letter A representing English to this exact character. That means text in Chinese. And I'm, I'm not sure here, this is actually Japanese because that's uh, probably more familiar, less daunting to uh, English speakers to pick up as a uh, East Asia language, uh, but that came from Chinese as well. So this means, uh, this sounds like wen means text originally. So ancient times when we preserve text before, I mean, before the digital age, before printing press, Originally, when we want to keep record of things happening, big events, right? He, he, historians uh, written down on something to pass to the future generations to understand what happened to them, right? Those texts were carved in either on turquoise uh, shells that we can, you know, preserve through life, or I mean, not through life, but through the, you know, the erasing power of nature, um, or on a bronze, uh, cast of bronze uh, vessel that record the stories. So the, the fact that we can go back in time to study the ancient text of how everything looked before this simplified Chinese, right? This is simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, that's like within a hundred years already transformed this much. Um, that if we want to trace back all the way to see what's the origin, how um, originally this concept was expressed visually. So this one means text. It came from the, the visual sense of, um, you know, text that's carved on either the turquoise shells or carved on this bronze metals. A lot of times it's going to be crisscrossing, uh, you know, uh, Chinese textures, just visually a lot of lines. They are, you know, intersecting with each other to create some visual um, abstraction of the, uh, the physical world, right? So this cross, and that means crisscrossing, intersecting between uh, the text, right? Just, just here, all of these, you can see crisscrossing, right? And then the top, my representation is this, um, this one little dot over horizontal line and that represents a, like a human touch uh, because a lot of times we see symbols like this symbol right now here, uh, top left frame of, uh, I mean frame within this space, the top left corner means high ground and high ground and that's in nature, if without the chimney, that means in nature. And if with chimney, that's like a human built structure. So this human touch was super abstracted in there, like this little dot over the surface. That means that's a human mark in there. And then we have text of this crisscrossing um, feature of, you know, this is a visual representation of the characters, right, together. It made up of this one, that means text. Okay, so text can represent generational, like a cross-generational wisdom that's worthy of passing down to the next generations. Um, 
Then the bottom, you see, same, but scale down. So that means something growing. So it's plant-based. So it's about, you know, be eligible to be alive, to breathe and uh, to live, have a pumping heart, all that vital signs. That means that. And then this top corner frame simply means a space. Like within that space, there are lives living in there. But we have this text supersede, like watching over the whole thing. So to my understanding, Chinese language characters create this image. Doesn't mean like a reproduce, that's just you get born to babies. It's more than that. Like you have to not only, you know, biologically pass down your genes, but culturally pass down your culture as well. So this combination of, you know, regenerating yourself, like recreating your own species, uh, passing down <laughs> your genes, um, but also make sure they are reading the text. They understand what happened before them, their ancestors, like how they were thinking so that they carry this continuation of culture. This is almost like what I'm doing here as well. I'm talking about the language I was born into, but because I'm, I'm living in an English speaking environment, I miss that part of me. So I want to share what I know about my culture and that's my passing down of my text here. And in a way, it is a reproducing, right? Um, so in Chinese definition, this reproduce doesn't just mean biologically rep reproduce because biological reproduce can apply to like animals as well. They just give, you know, give birth, but you need to cultural, like a cultivate, um, like a raise the next generation the way you want to by passing down this culture symbol or text, or, you know, represented on the text. So that's reproduce. Um, okay, so now we have sheng means the act of, you know, like a plant, like you generically re reproduce, recreate a copy of you. And then chan means have this cultural, this human touch thing. Like you're not just reproducing babies, you are raising them to be, to appreciate, to carry on your values or your goals or missions, whatever, like your tribe, your tribe's core um, culture to, to continue uh, what you've started, right? So that's the, the kind of reproduce. But in contemporary Chinese, when we pair sheng and the chan together, it actually means production because that's the, the that's the age we were living in. Like we, this Shengchang concept must have came from after the industrial age that when mass production became a thing. And then Chinese language users have to come up with, the, um, have to pick up characters to correspond to this concept of mass production. So, um, Sheng means birth, right? And the Chan have this culture, this human, this you know, intentional design, like a human design kind of reproduce it. It's not just random or by nature's force alone, right? Here is by human force represented by that text. That text is what human, you know, intelligence or consciousness. Um, as we talked about so much <laughs> in the chat GPT post chat. Chat GPT world that um, that's what made the distinction. So this both Sheng and the Chan have this reproduction capacity, like a creating volumes of it, right? Repro reproducing uh, clones of itself uh, in multitude. But this Chan have this concept of it's by design. It's you know in this case mass production is it's by engineering and to make sure everything copy exactly the same the way you want that you can you know, appeal to the mass market um, so that you can you know, be profitable. So that's Sheng Chan in, um, in, in Chinese, how it came into being with this human touch, um, this text, that's the key of Chan to understand what is production today. It's you know, reproducing by design, okay? Catching into the current thing of thinking about one more today, do another day.